So in this particular episode, I'm going to explain why we need so much uh, to learn, why we need all these uh, languages in order to make a simple chat app like this one. So in the old days, uh, when the internet was simply beginning, the only language was HTML. Now, HTML is the language that we used to design this particular interface here. And that's because the language that a browser understands is actually HTML. So this is why HTML is required. So the way the internet used to work a long time ago was that, let's say for example, you have your PC here at home. So you're sitting on a PC and you have this website to access, which is on the internet, right? So what you would do is sitting here on your table, you'd make a request. So you make a request to the internet and then the computers that are responsible for knowing where that website leads or resides will inform the computer that has the website so that that computer can return a result to you. And that result would be in form of HTML. And that's what the internet was at that time. You just send a request and then a static HTML page is returned to you and then you simply read what's on it just like the way this page is you can't really do much with this page because the information is very static for example even the name here that's written is hard coded into this page this name will never change and unless the owner of the website types in something else so this is how the internet used to work with only HTML but things began to become a little bit complicated. So what happened was uh, people with uh, websites wanted to know who's visiting their websites and so that the next time they can give them a better experience. So things changed a little bit now. When you uh, send a request at this point, there was what is called server-side uh, technology. So for example, in our case, we're going to talk about uh, PHP right so what happened was PHP uh, and other server-side languages were introduced and this could be like uh, Java and uh, uh, right now we have something like Node.js so there's a lot of uh, server-side technologies to consider in this day and age but so what happened was when this uh, server-side language was introduced what it would do is if someone makes a request it to check who is this one making a request uh, have they made a request here before and so on so all that information needed to be saved somewhere on the computer on the server that has this for example PHP right so in order to save this data they would create a text file on that computer so this text file would contain some information for example uh, if you, your, your browser had visited this website before, that information will be recorded on the text file so that the next time you visit the website, they can give you specific preferences that you want, okay? And the, pro the thing is, as the internet became more complex, what happened was it wasn't enough for a text file to, to simply store that information because the shortcomings of a text file are like this. If this file becomes too big, okay it becomes increasingly difficult to find the data that you want because you have to go to a specific line to get the data so if for example the information you want is at the very end down here it will take a really long time for this php to read that file and then the second problem is that if one user uh, sitting here is accessing uh, this file so as soon as they access the website the file has to be read to check who this user is. So for as long as this user is using this file, it cannot be edited by another user at the same time. So this became a real big problem because if you have, let's say 10 people accessing this website at one time, then you have a problem because they have to wait for that first person to finish with the file. And then as soon as it's saved, another person can be checked to confirm their identity. So this is why things like a database were introduced. Uh, in our case, it's my, MySQL that we are talking about. 
So MySQL is simply a, a text file like this one, which stores data in a much, much better way, which makes it very easy to read that data backward. And most importantly, MySQL can allow multiple users to connect to it at the same time because it can queue their requests in a line and handle them uh, much, much better than a simple text file. So this is why we come to MySQL. So as you can see now, we need MySQL to store users' information as a database. And then we need PHP to actually control the storing of data and to control uh, to, to deal with some other logic, for example, reading of files on the server, saving of files, etc., etc., and returning the correct request to the right user. And then we need HTML to actually be the technology that is sent back to the browser so that the user can see the website that they want. So now the problem with uh, this scenario, this is all good, but the only problem is once the website gets to the user, the server is out here on the internet, right? So once the uh, HTML gets to the computer, this PHP, uh, the PHP here cannot do anything to the code that is on the website here. So PHP has no control over the user's website, or oh, uh, browser, sorry. PHP cannot control what's inside this browser. It can only control what's on the server, the computer that's on the internet. So this is why JavaScript was introduced because if, for example, you have a website here and you simply want to change the color, uh, background color, maybe you want to use the night mode of that website, where when you have only PHP running, you would have to click on the button to change the color. And then what will happen is the color will not simply change on your browser, but what will happen is it will send another request to the website and then to the server in this case, and then the server will return a darker version or a different colored version of that same website. Now, with the introduction of JavaScript, you don't need to make these continuous requests to the server. You can simply edit your page in real time on your browser. So JavaScript, once you make the request, when the request is returned, it comes with the page that you get comes with JavaScript. So the JavaScript does nothing on the server. This is PHP's job at this server. But as soon as the code reaches your browser, then JavaScript takes over. So now JavaScript can manipulate your page to your liking. So this created the impression that uh, web pages can be kind of alive. They're not just static pages, right? Now the issue is uh, JavaScript works independent of PHP. So there is no communication between uh, JavaScript and PHP. So one thing can be uh, made here. For example, let's say you change the color of your website. Now you want the night mode and you've activated it using JavaScript here. PHP on this hand has no way of, <coughs> excuse me, PHP has no way of knowing what changes you made to the website at that time using JavaScript because there's no interaction. So the next time you request the page, it will come back with the original color that you had, even though you had changed it with JavaScript. So as technology improved, they figured out how to make the JavaScript here communicate with the PHP on the server, okay? So to do this, because normally what would happen is for you to make, to communicate with PHP, you have to make a request. Now these requests are not asynchronous. They are synchronous requests, meaning once you're making the request, the page is unusable during that time when it's requesting something. So if you go to your browser like this and you click on something, a request has to be made to the server. And during that time that it's loading, you cannot use the website. And also if JavaScript changes something here, the server has no way of knowing what has changed. So this is where this technology was introduced called Ajax, okay? So this is a way that JavaScript, uh, it's an 
asynchronous way. Asynchronous means it can make a request without affecting the functionality of the page. So the user interface will still be clickable while JavaScript is making a request to the server using this technology called Ajax. All right. So JavaScript will make a request to PHP and then it will get a response and, and can do something about that response. So now this creates a real-time communication between your browser and the server. So a lot can happen in this communication. Any kind of data can be uh, swung back and forth through these two without actually refreshing your page. Now, this is a very powerful technology because now it gives the impression that your website is not just static, but it's alive because it can go back to the server and get some information and come back and display that information in real time without affecting your interface and interaction with it. And so you may ask, so what is JSON all about? Now, this one is simply JavaScript uh, object notation and is simply a method that is used to send data between JavaScript and PHP. So in this case, it's between the client side, which is JavaScript, the, the thing that uh, the, the technology that is on your browser and the server side technology, which is PHP, right? So now the communication between the two, because these are very different languages. They don't work in the same way at all. JavaScript is fully object oriented, while PHP is kind of object oriented. So the thing is, these two cannot communicate together. Even if they were both object oriented, it would be difficult for them to communicate because the main way that we store information in these languages is through arrays or objects, right? Now, you cannot transfer an array between, uh, because as you can see here, your computer is connected to the internet by some wires, right? And the information between these two is sent in a serial manner, meaning uh, information is sent as ones and zeros like this, zero one, zero one, zero one in a sequence. That way you don't need a hundred wires to send this information. You can simply use two wires because the information is sent one bit at a time. Now, if you're transferring this information, you need a way, if I have an array here, for example, so let's say I have an array on this computer with uh, content in here. So there's uh, location number one, number two, and number three here. And I want to repeat so that PHP can get the same array over here of data. So what I would need to do is send this information as bits over the internet to this server right here. And then the server has to be able to reconstruct because what's happening here is these, whatever content is in this array is converted to a string because as you can see, the zeros and ones are simply a string of data, okay? So the array is converted to a string and then transferred to the server. So once the server uh, gets the data, it comes in form of a string and it has to reconstruct this array. So now this becomes a little bit difficult uh, the first technology that was uh, created to handle this was called XML. Okay, like that. So what XML does is it creates tags, you know, like uh, let me give an example here. For example, you'd have a tag like uh, username, something like that. And then there's a closing tag, just like the way uh, HTML is like, something like this. And then you have the name, for example, John, like this. So all this is sent as a string of data, just like this. And then when PHP gets this data, it's going to read and see, okay, I have to create an array uh, called username, and then it's going to have the value of John. So this is simply a string, but PHP can read this string and convert it to an array. So this is how they used to communicate with uh, XML. However, JSON is an advanced version of XML because it does the same thing, but with less uh, data to transfer. So I'll give an example here of this same array that is a uh, username John. In terms of uh, JSON, what you would need to send is something like this. 
username and then full colon like that and then John something like this so already <clears throat> excuse me so already as you can see I am sending exactly the same amount of data however this is much shorter than this now this may look like uh, it's a very small difference at this point however if you have thousands and thousands of bytes uh, this adds up eventually you find that uh, an XML file is much much larger than a JSON file but essentially they do exactly the same thing XML and JSON do exactly the same thing but we prefer JSON because it's much more convenient it's got other advantages that I will not get into right now but that's the technology we're going to be using so to recap what we've talked about so far uh, HTML is required because that's what we need to display our data on the browser and then PHP is required because this is the server side uh, technology that is responsible for reading and writing to our database and also for uh, creating the logic that we need to design the website that we want to send to a particular user mysql saves the data from the user and so that's a database and then javascript will manipulate the interface of our website and then it's going to use ajax to do that in real time to communicate with php and the database and then it's going to transfer that data in form of json so this i hope you understand what's going on here because it helps to be a better uh, programmer if you actually understand why you need certain things and why you need all these technologies so in the next video we're going to see how uh, javascript works we're going to begin with javascript so that we can begin to design something that can communicate with the server all right so i'll see you in the next video